With the edible delight all packaged up, it goes back out into the very communities that produced it, making local cafes and restaurants taste that much sweeter. I would like uh, espresso and a little bit of honey drizzled in there. Would you say that keeping bees, is this a passion, a hobby? I would say a passion and a profession. When I started delivering honey on bike dressed like a bee, I noticed a lot of people just were really curious and wanted to know what was going on with bees. We started to educate people by just showing them that honeybees aren't a dangerous creature. They're really important to us. One of the reasons I really love bees is that they work as a social organism, as a unit. And so one little individual bee is not super strong. But her and all of her sisters, 50 to 70,000 of them together, can do incredible things like make honey. And so if we model that as human beings, that adds up to something very large and can actually impact. And these end of time creations are the stuff of road warrior dreams or nightmares. These guys love their cars. I mean, we've got all sorts of custom cars out here. You mean this is custom? This doesn't come off the lot like this? No, it doesn't come off the lot like that. This is the rev rod. Is this something that you customized yourself? Most of this is my design, but the artistic aspect of it came from the welders that actually put this together. How are you doing? Hey. Going this way? Yeah. Would you say that rev rod is an extension of who you are? The vehicles make the apocalypse. This is as much part of Wasteland for me as anything else that I wear. So cool. We're like in a big glass of water surrounded by ice cubes. Exactly, yeah. But these ice cubes are 10 feet tall on the right side and 20 yards wide. And if it's like 10 feet above, there's at least 20 feet of ice below. That's why they call it the tip of the iceberg. Hey. Exactly. What is it about these waters that keeps bringing you back? Oh, it's always changing. You come out every single day and it's different. And how has this landscape that we're currently in, how has it changed? The glaciers are getting shorter. Basically, imagine a river that's running out of water. Okay. Our glaciers are essentially just losing ice. What do you think is the cause of that? The snow that we get in the winter is not sticking around anymore because the summers are warmer. And so our glaciers are also falling in volume as well as power. What type of effect is that having on the local economy in Alaska? It's hard to quantify. One of our number one things people come to see in Seward is the glaciers. As they start to recede, probably tourism the tourism recedes with it. That looks like a big piece just fell off, huh? Oh yeah. It looks like ice cream. Totally. It's beautiful though. This landscape and these ecosystems have been shaped for so long by having glaciers around. That's one of those things that most people are pretty concerned about is the balance, just the balance of our ecosystem overall. What can the everyday person do to try and save this amazing landscape? Obviously lessening your carbon footprint is great. So buying local actually can also help. If you're eating well, if you're supporting your local community, then you're supporting this up here too. It's all interconnected. Yeah. There's our office, hey! All right. <laughs> and here is an absolute LA icon over here. The Hollywood sign. Is that Griffith Park? Griffith Park. The we got Griffith. the whole Griffith Park here, right in the middle of the city. There's Dodger Stadium right there. There it is. I mean, you can see downtown LA. You could almost argue that downtown LA, where all the skyscrapers are, isn't even the main focal point of Los Angeles. It's true, isn't it? You start realizing that there's multiple. You know, I love living in a city where you've got so much resources around us. You know, we've got beautiful coastline and the big bay around uh, Santa Monica. And then we have all our mountains you know, dividing us. I mean, you, you don't notice it when you're at ground level, but from up here, you look down, you don't see one open green patch of land. The population size is growing hugely. Have you seen the highway system expand since you've been here? Yes, the rush hour, if you want to use that term, doesn't seem to apply anymore here. It's always you know, rush hour. It's rush hour all the time. Like, look down here. Look at that. <laughs> That's gridlock. That's L it. Listen, it's 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> People, don't you have somewhere to be? There's a misconception. That up there? You hear about how dangerous this area is within a stone's throw from the DMZ. <laughs> but I think the only danger that we faced today was having too good of a time. Not just what this festival has accomplished, 
but what you aim to accomplish in the future is very inspiring. Oh God, I'm sideways! Yeah! Paddles up! What was the purpose? Why did they build this canal? For trade. So there's a lot of history here. Uh, yeah, of course. Been waiting all day, my friend. Show me your meat. Ça, c'est une magnifique côte de bœuf. This is one of the most beautiful cuts of meat I've ever seen. Oh, so for something like this, should I use the joystick or the wheel? Yeah, definitely use the joystick. It smells like heaven, and it sounds like a symphony. Oh! Oh! I stayed. I didn't move. Oh, man. I think I just got a haircut. Encore un peu de sel et de poivre. Watch out, go right, go right. Sorry, people. I was a little sketchy there. Voila! <laughs> Voila. Perfect. I am the captain now. I think this is done. The Canal du Midi is a completely new way to discover the area. Really nice for traveling, slowing down. And it's an adventure, you know. Perfect. This is like the biggest, juiciest, tastiest ribeye I've ever eaten. Yes. Ah, what do you think about that? Everything here is about savoir vivre. C'est la vie. Savoir vivre. Magnifique. Savoir vivre. Yes. And that means? That means enjoy your life. The sunset, the vineyards. La viande, le canal, la campagne, il fait chaud. Your best friend? <laughs> no? <laughs> what more could you ask for? C'est bon, tout va bien. This LA native is actually one of the kindest guys you'll ever meet. I love you. <laughs> and one hell of a gearhead. You are, besides being an amazing actor, a car enthusiast, correct? Well, absolutely. But, you know, most people, like, will buy them, mm -hmm. you know, after they're all done. Yeah. You know, we get them and restore them. Where do you think that the obsession with cars began in L.A.? I mean, obviously, the weather has a lot to do with it. I really think one of the big things was the fact that uh, you'd get an old car, you couldn't afford a new car. So you'd get an old car and, and, and fix it up and try to make it look good. How long ago did you get into classic cars? Oh, God, my first car was a 1950 Buick. So within your collection, I mean, do you have a personal favorite or is it like like kids, you can't play favorites, you gotta love them all? You gotta love them all. But the 65 Buick Riviera, I think is probably one of the rarest cars that I have. I don't consider it a hobby, this is what I do. Like, I can tell you everything about this car. Yeah. You know, it's like it's a 1942 Chevy style master. The trick to this is that you can't open the trunk unless you do this. Oh, look at that, man. So How what tricky. we did was we, like, just put a different little sound system. So this didn't come with the original car, no. you're saying? <laughs> There's only one thing that Johnny is better than me at, and that's uh, taking losses. But before we go head to head, time for some one-on-one -on -one instruction. You did what I told you to do and left Leroy's restraints loose, right? I'm gonna go up some bumps, we're gonna bounce this guy out. Okay. Ejection seat. Watch and learn, Leroy. Hang on! Oh boy, let me see something. Show me what you got! Uh-oh. Alright, four feet, four feet, okay, four right. feet. Hey, pedal to the metal. Is this all you got? Driving like this, you got a zero percent chance of winning. What are you doing? I'm falling asleep back here. Just wait till I get over there. That's a wrap, boy. Are you done? Now it's Leroy's turn to take the driver's seat. Show me what you got, buddy. Go, go, go. Oh, yeah, you about to get ready for it. You about to throw up. Here we go, Leroy. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, let's go. Here we go. Oh. Get up. Get ready, boy. Percent says I am the best flyboarder Curacao has ever seen. Woo! Flying high at Curacao! Woo! Home run! <laughs> Woo! I mean, as if the beaches here aren't incredible enough, the people, the water. The sights, the sound, the art, the culture. There's truly something for everybody here. What better way to cap off the adventure, the trip, the vacation of a lifetime than flying into the Caribbean sunset?
Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. For more, subscribe to First Look and come with me on all my adventures around the world. Who am I kidding? I'm probably sitting at home watching Netflix or playing Xbox. Either way, what are you waiting for? Just hit subscribe already.